everyone, it's Kate here, and in this video we will talk about value. We will be creating a value scale not only in grayscale, but also in color, and we will learn to match the color to our tonal values. Also, I wanted to say, if you have not subscribed to the channel still, do subscribe and click that bell button below so that you get notifications about new videos. And for now, let's start. Hi everyone, it's Kate here, and today we're going to be talking about... Uh, thing called value. So we'll be talking about light and shadow and why it is important to see value in color. So I here I have prepared already a grid. What you need to do is you can take a charcoal pencil or a willow charcoal stick and you create a grid of six per three. It has to be big enough for you to actually apply color so don't create it too small because otherwise it's going to be very difficult for you to actually add color to it. So what we're going to do is first I'm going to take two charcoal pencils. These are General's charcoal pencils and this is a white one and the other one is the 6B, the soft one. Why am I using a 6B? Because this one is the softest one I've got so it's going to give me the darkest black that I want to use. Why am I using charcoal? Because I work in pastels and very often I do drawings in charcoal because charcoal layers very well underneath soft pastels. So let's start. What we're going to do is we're going to take our black and we're going to cover all the area to our right. So we cover all of it. Here you can also practice your hatching. So even if you smudge it, you will still see the hatching texture slightly. So what I'm doing now is I'm smudging it. And then I'm applying the second layer. Why am I not using a willow charcoal? Because willow charcoal, you will see, it's going to give us a black that is not at its darkest. So it's going to basically be gray compared to our charcoal pencil. So charcoal pencils are usually the darkest when you compare charcoal. Okay. You can also use compressed charcoal sticks. They also give you quite a nice black, but General's is pretty good when it comes to black. And I'm going to layer one more layer. So I need to get this as dark as I possibly can get this. So this is going to be our dark, dark as dark in our value scale. Okay, so I've blended this. Now I'm going to clean my hands. I'm using wet wipes. And wet wipes are great because they take off all the pastel and charcoal dust. And make sure that your hands then I dry after you are using wet wipes because otherwise if you touch the paper you're going to leave a mark and then when you layer over it it's not going to look the same as all the surrounding area it's going to be darker and look greasy so now I'm going to take my white charcoal pencil and I'm going to hatch in this extreme plus I will also pass on to this um, next these next squares here. Why am I doing that? So I want to see how much dark uh, lighter is my charcoal pencil compared to the tone of the paper. So this is a neutral color gray and I will be covering these two areas because I want these two areas to be actually lighter than the color of the paper. And here we will be leaving the color of the paper to serve us as one of the value scale gradations. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hatch as I did with my black and rub. So we need to get an even coating here until we get both of these gradation scales lighter than the color of the paper. So now you will see what I'm talking about. So now since my hands are clean, I can start rubbing it. So we will need multiple applications of the pencil. Also a great exercise in hatching. And also here. Okay. 
Now we can rub all of this and see if both of these are lighter than our paper color. How do we do that? We squint our eyes. So when you squint, there has to be a difference between this segment and this segment. So now I'm squinting and I see that it's not enough. So I'm going to add another layer of my charcoal pencil. So why do I start with a charcoal pencil and don't use white pastel straight? Because if I were to use white soft pastel straight, it would give me a much lighter gradation instantly. So I'm starting with a white charcoal pencil, which is going to help me build that lighter tone, the lighter value, gradually. So I can always compare it to the color of the paper and see if it's lighter or if it's light enough. Also, remember the thing, there's nothing right or wrong about this. There can't be um, to, uh, there can't be this difference that you see, let's say that you want to make these gradations differ more between themselves or you want to create a longer color scale with more values in it. So basically, if you decide to create a color scale with 10 gradations in it, it's perfectly fine. It's just that you will have to see, squinting your eyes, if each cell becomes gradually darker. So in this case, we have six, and I need to make sure that from white, I get to this black, and the gradation is um, consistent. So that's the most important thing. So now I'm squinting my eyes, and I see that this part is already light enough, but I see that there's no difference between these two. So now I can switch into my white pastel, and I can add the white pastel over my charcoal pencil. I'm sorry for the background noise, if you hear any. It's just that we have works going on in our house and in all the houses around us. I don't know, people went crazy with fixing up their homes. <laughs> so now that I added a soft pastel, so this is a little piece of uh, an extra soft pastel, I can see the difference between the white of my charcoal pencil and the white of my soft pastel. So basically, if I squint now and I look at all this color gradation here that we have already, I see that this is my whitest white. This is the next value between this whitest white and the color of the paper. So now what do we have to do? Now that we've finished creating our lights, again, I'm gonna clean my hands. And now I'm going to switch to willow charcoal. Why willow charcoal? Because our pencil is very dark. With willow charcoal, the same way as we did with our charcoal pencil, we can build up the layers to see if they are dark enough very gradually. If we go in with a charcoal pencil instantly, what it's going, going to give us might be too dark and then we will have to rub it out and go with the erasers and basically smudge everything. So it's best to always build up your values gradually, be it lights or darks. So now I'm taking a willow charcoal, as this is a lot lighter than my charcoal pencil. What I'm going to do is going to basically do the same thing that I did here with a charcoal pencil, but add a thin veil of willow charcoal here and see how dark it allows me to go. So now I apply the first layer and I squint and I see that there's not a lot of difference. So basically here I see more difference between these two values than here. So it means I need to add another layer of my willow charcoal. And as this is going to be darker than this segment, I'm applying immediately my willow charcoal to both of them so I can darken it up. I'm just applying willow charcoal again. You can also use it on the side like a pastel stick. And again, I'm rubbing and I'm squinting to see if this segment is dark enough so that it creates that gradual transition from this value into my darks. So now I'm squinting again and I see that I have it dark enough for me to actually tell the difference between this value and this value. And it's consistent to the gradation here. So from light until here, the difference is similar from here until here. So the difference between the two tones is very similar. So I'm trying to accomplish that so that my gradation is consistent. Now, I, I am happy with this part. I want to make this one darker 
so that it differs from this value, but it's still lighter from the black that I put onto the paper already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another coating of my willow charcoal. If I go over this part uh, where it's black black, it doesn't matter because it can't get any darker because willow charcoal is still lighter than the charcoal pencil as it's a compressed charcoal inside the charcoal pencil. And I'm doing the same thing, I'm rubbing. And I see that's still not dark enough, so I'm going to add another layer. Again, you can hatch here. Also, you might have noticed that I'm using, um, that I'm drawing vertically. It helps me to actually clear the dust from charcoal and from pastels as it falls down onto my easel. So now I'm looking, is this dark actually dark enough? Or is it too light? I see the problem here now that I'm when I'm squinting that these two values are very similar. What do I do? I take a clean finger and I rub away the excess charcoal. So this is the best part about charcoal. You can always correct it. It's even more forgiving than soft pastels. Now I see that I have a beautiful gradation. I think I'm going to add even more pencil here just to make sure that it's the darkest dark. Okay, and now I can clearly see the gradation from my lights into my darks with a consistent gradient and using the color of my paper as one of the tonal values. What do we do now? So why is it important to understand value not only in black and white but also in color? So each color has its own value. And it's very, um, it was very confusing to me when I just started drawing that I could not see how dark or how light each color is. So I couldn't put my eyes into kind of grayscale uh, perspective to actually understand how light or dark colors are. And this is a great exercise to actually help you understand the value of the color. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our grays and we're going to choose grays that are consistent with the value of our particular segment. So I'm going to clean my hands just to be sure that I don't contaminate my light colors. And here we can start or from the light or from the dark or from the middle segments. It doesn't matter. You can start however you want. So I'm going to go backwards now. Let's go from the darks into the lights. So I have a black pastel and I'm matching it to the segment that has my darkest darks. So if I squint, I see that the difference there is practically non-existent when I squint my eyes. It can vary half a tone, like it doesn't have to be exactly that tone, but the closer you get to the value of the segment, the better. So this is my first value. Next, I'm going to choose another gray and I'm going to match this segment here. So here we're doing basically a gradation of grays and I'm looking, squinting my eyes and looking if this color has the same value of the segment that I selected. For now it fits. Next, I'm going to take the next value that I have and I'm going to add it to the next segment. Again, squinting my eyes, I see that they are very close value wise. You can also uh, do this exercise and check yourself um, kind of for mistakes, like proof your, proofread yourself for mistakes by taking a photo in grayscale and see if you actually manage to match the value. So let's continue. I have another color that is very close in tone to the color of the paper. So when you, if you followed my, any of my tutorials, you might have heard very often that I refer to some colors as colors that are very close to the color of the paper. It means that tonally, like tonal wise, they are very, very close to the color of the paper. So when you squint, you don't see the difference here, but you see the value that is very similar. Next, I have an even lighter gray, which is going to fit here. So you can see that if you squint, the value is very similar between this and this segment. And of course, then I have my whites that I can add here. So this is a very, very light gray. It's still gray. I don't know if you can see it well on camera, but it's not white, white. So I have a white, white here. 
you can see maybe a slight difference. So this is a warmer kind of gray. Now we have our grays in a tonal value. So this is all great. Grays are easy, right? How do we do about colors? So now comes the core of this exercise and we're going to take our color, choose any color you like, and we're going to try and match the value of our tonal scale. So now I have my greens here and why did I cover also, um, I want to talk about the fact, why did I cover all of these um, segments, all three squares, before I layered the pastel over them? Because if I were to layer the pastel over the paper, the paper color would show through and it would kind of um, knock me off a bit. So uh, I wouldn't see the true value of it as well as if when I put it on the charcoal. So this is the wonderful thing about charcoal and working in soft pastels that you actually can put charcoal underneath, kind of create an underpainting like you would do in oils, tonal underpainting, and then just work with colors over the top, matching that underpainting. So now I have my dark green. So this is not black. It's a very dark green. It's a Sennelier green. Uh, an awesome color, very useful. So here I matched my darks. If I squint, I see that this segment is very similar all over here, here, and here. Next, I take the next value and I apply it over my charcoal again. And I squint and I see that these two differ and this segment, all three squares, are very, very close in value. The same thing, I'm trying to match a color. So again, this is the green from the same family, so it's a kind of a cooler green. I'm trying to match the same value. So if I squint, I see that this value and this value and this value is very, very similar. The same thing I do here. So this is the color I would use, as I say, the closest one to the color of the paper, because uh, why do we need this closest color, um, closest tonal wise color, the one that's closest to the paper? Because if we blend it out into the color of the paper, we can create a very smooth transition and kind of fade our work into the color of the paper. So you can see that basically this gets faded into the color of the paper without creating a huge contrast. And it's a very great technique to use when you're drawing soft pastels. Next, I move into my lighter value. Again, uh, I've already selected these pastels from my pastel box just to speed up the process of the video but you can take time and do swatches on the side just to see how light your pastels actually are just to make sure that you hit that exact value tone and this is my lightest green which is very close to white you can see that here I can put it you can see that it's very light but it's still a green color not a white one and this matches our lightest value so this is an amazing exercise to practice and see what colors go into which value scale. So you can practice with many different colors. You can create a sheet and just create the gradation first. You can make 10 different gradation scale, a scale of 10 different gradations, or you can make three gradations. So if you create three, it's going to be a lot easier, but you won't get as much um, of experience, like as much of learning. So your brain kind of learns when you do these exercises to actually recognize the color of each pastel and to actually place it on a color scale so you understand where it should be in your drawing, so where you should use it. And this is basically what a color scale is. It's going from one extreme value to another. So from lights into the darks. Thank you for watching. I really hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment, and share. You can also go to mypastelschool.com and download your free version of the pastel ebook that I created myself, where you will find all the information about soft pastel materials and how to actually choose your first set for a beginner. For now, I have to say bye. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you in the next video where we will definitely be drawing something nice together. Bye!